Hey guys, Janky Proper. You know, one of the most important steps I have taken in pursuing a more self-sufficient lifestyle was installing a way to heat my house comfortably off-grid. And the addition of this stove was a great aesthetic uh, addition to my house. My wife loves it, the kids love it, people come over, it's the first thing their eyes go to, and I like it. I like old stuff. It's over a hundred years old. It's totally restored. I like the whole mentality of that age, you know, where you built something to last, unlike the culture today where we're constantly buying stuff one year, it's obsolete the next. Now I did do a video on the M1950 Yukon stove as well, and it's a great backup stove. You know, maybe you can't put a wood stove in. Uh, maybe you don't have the money to put a wood stove in. Maybe uh, you, you live in an apartment. That's a great way to have some backup insurance and you know you're still able to use it whether you want to go cabin tenting or maybe on a fishing trip. It's a great stove to have as an insurance policy if you're prepping. In this vid I want to introduce you to my Perfection oil heaters. Now this is kind of a bridge the gap heater for me. And I want to, like I always say in all my vids, you know, I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy one of these. I'm passing this information along to you because this works for me. And maybe you'll see that they'll work for you if you have an application for them. That's why I'm doing this. Now, I use these heaters both because, you know, they appeal to my self-sufficiency side. They help me not to kick that grid power on. I use them to bridge the gaps. Let's say... Uh, you know, I don't really want to fire up the wood stove because it's warm enough outside, but I want to, you know, pop a little heat in the house. I'll turn these on. In fact, the blue one, when I get up in the morning, and I get up pretty early before everybody else, I usually keep that one in our upstairs bedroom bathroom, and I turn it on for my wife because she gets up an hour or so later, and then she's got a nice warm bathroom uh, to step into. I use these to bridge the gaps. I also think you'll recognize some of the prepping qualities of these. Uh, not only are they very mobile, but they'll run on a, a multitude of fuels. I only use kerosene in them because that burns the best in them. Um, but you could use diesel fuel in this, so the same fuel that I use for my vehicle, I could use in these heaters or vice versa. Uh, you could use purple home heating fuel on these. You could use AV gas. Um, you could even mix, you know, mix oil and uh, on, uh, you know your regular fuel with them just to stretch it out. So there's a lot of prepping qualities to these heaters as well, but like the wood stove, they also meet that aesthetic requirement. Uh, I don't have to store these necessarily in the spring, summer, and fall when they're not in use. I can put them in a corner, I can stick a plant on them, and they look great. That is one of the things that uh, I really appreciate again from that time period of how elegant or how aesthetic everything looked. And I wish they would uh, pay more attention to that today. I mean, these things are over the patent, the, the original design is over 100 years old. In fact, the red one, which is a model 500, is over 100 years old. It's one of the original models. This one, the 630, has a few upgrades on it, and it's probably only 80 or 90 years old. Uh, they use the same wick that they did 100 years ago, and it's still available today. Anyway, let me show you how I usually get these. One of them I got on Craigslist, the red one, and uh, the blue one I got in an estate sale and I recently restored that. Let me show you some clips on how easy it is to restore these things and then uh, put them back together. I'm not going to waste your time and especially not my time uh, breaking this down step by step. The heaters are so simplistic that anyone with a fiber of mechanical ability will be able to figure this out fairly quickly and I like that. I like that about uh, you know that's how things used to be done. They were made to last a long time and they were easy to take apart and uh, clean up or replace or, or uh, work on. And, and these heaters are a good example of that. They're a very, very simplistic design. Uh, there's a few differences between the models, like the 500 and, and this one that I'm working on is the 630. You can see how they made some advancements in the uh, converters. And, you know, like the older ones actually had a cork on the end of the fuel gauge where this one has a, a nice brass piece. You can see some differences. But the good news is almost everything is... Uh, interchangeable and they used and kept the same wick design which really helps and again that goes back to kind of the the old school way of doing things making things easy to work on and easy to replace and cheap to maintain a lot of times when you get these things they haven't been used in a long time and they need to be cleaned up this one actually came with an original perfection wick in it that's still good I could still use that it's completely dried out 
uh, they painted the uh, the top of the converter and they t they painted the stove itself. I use soft wire brushes to take all the old paint off. And I use like uh, gun brushes and welding brushes to uh, clean up the converter uh, itself or anything else that needs to be uh, polished up, especially the tank itself. I usually always have to soak that down with PB Blaster or WD-40 and just let it sit overnight and then I'll, I'll scrub it all up. Many times when you get these things, they've been painted. You know, they've inherited them from their grandparents or got them at a garage sale or an estate sale and they like the antique look of them because they are a cool looking uh, piece of equipment and people use them as plant stands or just you know, decorations in their house and so they paint them up and uh, you know that makes a mess once you get the heater working and turn it on it's going to bubble the paint and smell the whole house up it's just a, a disaster but more times than not this is the condition that I find them in and so the hardest part about the whole deal when you're when you find these things usually is just removing all the paint. Now there's all kinds of ways uh, to take paint off. Uh, I could sandblast this if I wanted to get that whole operation out. If you had a sandblasting cabinet that would work great. I do not have one of those. Um, so usually I just soften the paint up with a torch and then I'll take some wire brush and it'll clean up pretty quick. This one's pretty easy. It's just a real light coat. Okay, a torch and a drill with a brass brush and it's clean, less than 10 minutes. You can use an angle grinder on this, but I think it's, it's too much. It takes off too much or more than I want. Uh, I have found that the drill and the brass brush works the best. So now it's time to put some paint on it. Uh, this part of the stove or heater gets the hottest. And you're going to need something uh, better than the 500 degree high temp paint. You can usually pick up at uh, Menards or Home Depot. Uh, even Fleet and Farm, some 2,000 degree. But if you find anything over 1,200, that'll usually do it. And they do sell stove paint online. Uh, you can usually get it on eBay. Uh, maybe you know somewhere local, but it's t it tends to be, you know, pretty expensive. I have found that uh, just engine paint. Again, anything over 1,200 degrees. This is 1,300 to 2,000 uh, for headers. Uh, that works pretty good too. And especially if you want some different colors, like you know, some deep red or green. But you can usually pick up black 2,000 degree paint uh, anywhere at your hardware store or Home Depot, Menards, whatever. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing with this. But I'm not going to remove all the paint down here because it doesn't get hot enough to bother that paint. I'll probably just smooth that out and uh, repaint it. This is enamel blue, which is, which is a rare upgrade for this model. So I'm going to keep that, of course, and uh, uh, mask that off, not to, not to bother it or damage it. This actually does not get that hot, so I won't remove this paint. I won't waste my time with that. I'll just repaint this over as well. But the inside of this pan can get hot, and uh, if I just repaint that even with high temp paint, it'll bubble this paint, and eventually that'll come off plus the smell. So I'll spend a little time in here just cleaning this up to get that paint off, and then I'll repaint uh, all the white here to sharpen the stove up. High temp paints uh, dry very fast. In 20 minutes you can touch them, and in two hours they're completely dry. And to do it right, you're supposed to bake them at uh, 250 degrees, such and such a time, blah, 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 blah. But what I do is... I've always done this, and it's always worked sticks real good. After I bake that on, I put a clear coat on. I don't like it glossy, I use a satin, and again this is just used for you know high uh, high temp car parts like headers, and uh, I've had a lot of good luck using this stuff too. It's, uh, it's pretty tough stuff. Real light. You don't want any drips now. millions of these made from the late 1800s to the 1950s. And it was really electricity that put the uh, Perfection oil heater company out of business because electricity was much cheaper. Things have changed today and that's why I use them. 
Just to give you an idea, uh, you know, these put out a ton of heat. One gallon of kerosene equals a wheelbarrow full of wood. They create a lot of ambiance too. Uh, my wife really likes them. I really like them. Uh, they project an image on the ceiling as well that kind of shimmers at night. Now these are very efficient and they burn very clean. Uh, like any kerosene or oil heater, they smell a little bit when you first start them up. And if that bothers you, then this isn't you know, the heater for you until they warm up, which takes a couple minutes, and then they'll start burning clean. Some people take them out on a porch or start them up outside, you know, if you really don't like the smell, but honestly, it only lasts a couple minutes and then it burns clean. Either in climates that aren't as cold as mine, you could use this as your main backup uh, heating source as well. And again, you can keep it out in the open where people are just going to think it's a, a beautiful antique. In the big scheme of things for me, um, this works really good because they burn the same fuel that I can use in my truck. I can burn kerosene in my truck or I can burn home uh, heating fuel in my truck if I had to. So I like the idea that I could switch off there. And you, vice versa, you can burn home heating fuel and diesel in these. But they, they burn uh, the most efficient with kerosene. Now I haven't done a scientific study on this, but you know, comparing them to a newer kerosene heater like this one on the right that I use down in my shop or, or in the garage for a space heater, uh, I would say they put out the equal amount of heat. Uh, the big difference is aesthetics. At the end of the season, the one on the right, the newer one, I have to put away somewhere because I just don't want it hanging out. I mean, it obviously says utility kerosene heater. The perfections were meant to be a decoration in your house. That's how they were built. And uh, they got a certain class to them. And like I said, off season, they just stay right in the house in the corner as a uh, you know, a little table. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. Check them out. Uh, they're worth it, and all the parts and wicks are still available today. 100-year-old idea that uh, is still alive and well in my home.